Hello and welcome back to Zig's Math Lessons. Today we're going to do the product rule, which is a way to differentiate functions that are products of other functions. The product rule. If we are given two functions, f of x and g of x, what is the derivative of their product, f of x, g of x? Well, Given h of x equals f of x, g of x, h prime of x is f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. Okay, that's a lot of words. But that's true. You know, I actually like to make up my own words. I, I don't like to say the derivative of the first function multiplied by the second function plus the second function differentiated multiplied by the first function which is actually true but just suppose that you were working this and f of x took you five to ten minutes to differentiate and maybe a half a sheet of paper or more it's easy to get lost in it so I've made up my own little kind of mantra it's kind of a saying that helps me not to get lost. It functions as a kind of a road map. So when I'm doing a product, I recommend h prime of x equals the first thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing prime times the first thing. Now there's no word, there's no such word as primed. I mean, what are we priming a pump here? No. We're differentiating functions, but I like to I like to use the word prime as a as a verb. So h prime of x is the first thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing prime times the first thing. Now, if you can have that mantra ingrained, then you won't get lost in a product when you're differentiating. Example: Determine the derivative of a function. Solution: Well. It looks like we could multiply this out and find the derivative. The way we did in the last lesson. So let's do it that way for starters. There's our function, y equals that product, multiply it out, use the distributive property, collect like terms, and now we can differentiate this the way we did in, in the last lesson dy by dx equals 5x to the 4 plus 3x squared minus 12. Remember how we go 5x to the 4 plus 3x to the 2 minus 12 because this is mx. And so here's our derivative. By multiplying it out, well, that's great. But suppose we had to differentiate this. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't see multiplying it out as being helpful in this case. And believe me, we do have to differentiate that. Let's do it again using the, the product rule. Here we go. Confirm using the product rule that the derivative of that function, which we just differentiated, is in fact dy by dx equals 5x to the 4 plus 3x squared minus 12. Solution, here we go. Differentiating this. dy by dx equals first thing primed times the second thing plus the second thing primed times the first thing. Now we know the derivative of this is 2x and we know the derivative of this is 3x squared minus 3. So let's do that. Multiply it out, collect like terms, and we find using the product rule that, yes, dy by dx is 5x to the 4 plus 3x squared minus 12, which is what we found a moment ago. Differentiate, then find the slope of the tangent at x equals 2 for a monster function. Well, of course, we could multiply this out. Yes, we could, and then differentiate it using the way, using the previous methods. Yes, we could do that. But we're trying to learn how to use this product rule. So let's do it using the product rule. So solution. Y prime equals first thing primed 
So the first thing, now it's not a thing, it's a function of x. Okay, I'm using slang here. First thing, first function of x, primed. Primed is not a word, unless we're talking about pumps. So the first function differentiated, but I'd like to say first thing primed times the second thing plus the second thing primed times the first thing. And there it all is, differentiated using the product rule. Now we could multiply this all out in both cases, collect like terms and then sub in x equals 2, but we weren't really asked for the simplified derivative. We were asked for find the slope of the tangent when x equals 2. So subbing in 2, y prime of 2. Well, okay, here we go. 2 squared times 9, so 9 times 4 is 36, minus 20. 2 squared is 4 times 5 is 20, and so on. Work it out and do the math. So y prime of 2 equals 308. The slope of the tangent to the curve is 308. Let's go again. Determine the slope of the tangent at x equals 1 for a function. Yes, we could multiply the root x in. Sure, we could. But we're learning to use the product rule. Solution, differentiate this. Now, x to the, root x is really x to the 1 half. Here we have a product of functions. dy by dx is the first thing primed, so it'll be 1 half x to the minus 1 half, which we learned from in the previous lesson, 1 half x to the minus 1 half times the second thing. So first thing primed times the second thing plus the second thing primed is 2x minus 3 times the first thing. First thing primed times the second thing plus second thing primed times the first thing. Then we have to take this and simplify it. Well, I can see a negative exponent on an, on an x, so that'll put that into the denominator under a root sign. This, this fraction on this x will put it under a root sign. We can now add fractions by creating a common denominator, and I'm assuming a calculus student knows how to add fractions. And now simplifying the numerator, collecting like terms, we have a simplified derivative, dy by dx. 5x squared minus 9x over 2 root x. But we were asked for the slope when x equals 1, so let's sub in 1, do the math, and work it out y prime of 1 is equal to negative 2. So we know the slope of the tangent at x equals 1, according to the calculus, is y prime of 1, and that's negative 2. Now, any serious student of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics has got at his or her disposal graphing technology. I've graphed this function. Here it is. It's this blue line. And we can see that when x equals 1, the slope along here looks like it's negative 2. This is the function that I graphed. I would like to take this opportunity to recommend some good technology for your home computer and for your devices. For the computer, I suggest MathGB. It's free. Download it and learn how to use it. There's a bit of a learning curve, but look at the look at the lovely results that you can achieve. This is the curve of this function. For your device, I would recommend SciGraphCalc or SimCalc or GoodGrapher. All of these are very good, excellent in fact. SimCalc will do all of calculus that uh, you'll need for the first four years of your post-secondary education. It, it amounts to essentially a, an encyclopedia of mathematics in your pocket.
So this should be available to you, the student, for sure. Moving on. Power of a function rule. If y is the power of a function, f to the x to the exponent n, then y prime is equal to, and there's this big expression, n times f of x to the n minus 1 times f prime of x. Let's look at this for a moment. I'm going to take this off. The derivative of the power of a function, we, we differentiate with respect to the function. So we go n times f of x to the n minus 1, like we did in the previous lesson, n times f of x to the n minus 1. But we prime this in terms of f of x, and so now we have to go through that to get to x times f prime of x. So that's the key. It's n times f of x to the n minus 1 times the derivative in those square brackets. For example, if y equals this function, 2x squared minus 5x cubed, then y prime is equal to 3 times all of this to the 2, 3 times all of that to the 2 times the derivative in there, which is 4x minus 5. Power of a function rule. Let's differentiate a quotient. Solution, we could rewrite this quotient as a product. We could call it 3x minus 2, and we'll need brackets for that, times this denominator to the minus 1. And now it's a product. We've turned a quotient into a product. And so we can say first thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing primed times the first thing as follows. y prime of x is first thing prime, which is 3 times the second thing plus the second thing prime, which will be minus 1 times all of this to the minus 2 times 2, because that's what we just learned about that derivative of the, of the power of a function. Minus 1 times all of this to the minus 2 times the derivative in here. So it will be minus 1 times all of that to the minus 2 times the derivative in there, which is 2 times the first thing. And here we have it. First thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing primed times the first thing. Now, of course, it's not things, and it's not primed, it's the derivative of the first function times the second function, plus the derivative of the second function times the first function, but that's too many syllables for me, and I don't want to get lost in all this. Simplifying, well, this negative exponent puts this factor in the denominator, this is minus 2 when you multiply those together, times 3x minus 2, and adding fractions with a common denominator, I hope, doesn't require too much explanation. Simplifying, multiplying it out, and collecting like terms. And we have f prime of x for this quotient. Example word problem. The position of an ant crawling along a clothesline is given by a function of t, where t is in seconds and s of t is its position in centimeters relative to a clothes peg on that clothesline. This might remind one of particle physics, plotting the motion of a particle. Determine whether the ant is moving towards or away from the clothes peg at t equals 3 seconds. Solution. To answer this question, we must determine both the ant's position and velocity at 3 seconds. S of t was given, subbing in 3, so s of 3, plugging it in, doing the math, we have s of 3 equals negative 3. We conclude that at 3 seconds, the ant is 3 centimeters to the left of the closed peg because its position is negative. See the closed line as a number line, and see the closed peg as 0 on the number line. And so we're at, when we are at s of 3 equals negative 3, we are to the left 
of the zero. Carrying this forward, we will reference this fact in a moment. To find the direction that the ant is moving, we must differentiate its position function to find its velocity. From its velocity, we can get its direction. Well, there's its position function. And here we go with first thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing primed, which will, which will be 3 times all of this to the 2 times 2, 3 times all of that to the 2 times 2, times the first thing. So what we have here is the first thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing prime times the first thing. And we need to multiply it out a bit, collect like terms. We've got 3 times 2 is 6t. And I common factored this, 2t minus 7 to the 2, 2t minus 7 to the 3. There's a common factor between these two terms, which is 2t minus 7 squared. Common factor it out. That leaves 2t minus 7 to the 1 and a 6t. Collecting like terms within that bracket. And we have a simplified derivative. 2t minus 7 squared times 8t minus 7. And we're interested in the value of this derivative when t equals 3 seconds. So s prime of 3, plug in 3, do the math. And it turns out that s prime of 3 is equal to positive 17 centimeters per second. So if we think about this, we can see that since its position is to the left of the closed peg, but its velocity is positive, and that means it's moving to the right, it must be moving towards the clothes peg. The extended product rule. Suppose we had a product of three functions, or four, or five, or six. If y equals f of x times g of x times h of x, then y must therefore equal f of x times square brackets g of x times h of x. And so y prime must be the first thing prime times the second thing, laid out here, plus the second thing prime, the derivative of this product, times the first thing. Now when we work out the derivative of this product, it itself will become first thing prime times the second thing plus the second thing prime times the first thing. Let's consider it. I just dropped these square brackets, so this first term is as shown. And this f of x, I brought outside of some square brackets for this, knowing that now the derivative of this product will be the first thing primed times the second thing plus the second thing primed, which will be h primed of x, times the first thing for this product within those brackets, multiplying over the brackets. And we have the extended product rule. If y is the product of three functions of x, its derivative is the first function primed times the other two plus the middle function primed times the other two plus the last function primed times the other two. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation here. If you like the content, please subscribe and tell your friends and help me grow my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.